asked me if I thought I could do this. I said yes, uh, but I'm not so sure. On behalf of Lori, Courtney, Whitney, and the Suttle family, welcome. to a time that we gather to celebrate the life of Dwayne Settle, a life really well lived. We, we're meeting in a, a place that's where it all began, at least for most of us. Diane said she wanted to go up and, and see the game room. And I can remember Dwayne and Lori, who I can't say the names of without saying them both, <laughs> sitting on the back row, the big guy with the fro. <laughs> and I know he was there because Lori was there. And wherever Lori was, Dwayne was. It's an incredibly sad day, uh, and yet a day to remember uh, what it looks like to live a life well. It's a, one of the great joys in life is to remember the treasure of sharing memories with friends. The relationships, which the only thing important in life really is the relationships that we have with people. And Dwayne is one of those people that made everybody feel so special. And it's just a great privilege for us all to be here today and to share the impact that he made on our lives with his family and everyone his life touched. Dwayne and I talked a lot. We, we, we've been friends since that day. We worked together. We had quiet times together. We, we shared events. Our families got together over the years. Uh, and we talked about a passage <laughs> recently, just before his passing, in Psalm 78. Psalm 78, it says that the sons of Ephraim, though armed with bows, turned back in the day of battle. And it goes on to say that they turned back in the day of battle because they forgot the works of God. And the reason they forgot the works of God is because the parents and the grandparents did not share what God was doing in their lives. And today is an opportunity for us to share the memories that cause us to know that Jesus is alive because of what he does in our lives. The answers to prayer, the times that he gives us of great peace and joy, the opportunity to experience relationships with, with people. Uh, we want to do that today. And after, after the music, we want to take the time to share our memories and stories about what made Dwayne special to us with his family and his friends so that they can hear, perhaps most of them will hear for the first time a side of Dwayne that they never knew, a really unique guy who made everybody feel special. So. Joel, thanks. So we're gonna have a couple of songs and I invite everybody to sing in. We've got lyrics on the screen here, so let's sing to the Lord together. And he was 
Anybody in your life that was as special as Dwayne, you'd have to look long and hard. When I met him, Lori was by his side, and that's where she stayed until he went home to be with the Lord. And I'm sure she's longing to go, as we all are. This world is not a very good place to live in now. But uh, he played with our quartet for a couple of years, and uh, we loved every moment we spent with him. And uh, just pray for me while I try to do this song.
already heard that. Fine. 
different understanding perhaps or reinforcement of their understanding of how much the way meant to you all. So that in the days to come, when they need grace and strength, they'll be able to remember not only what the Bible has to say about life and life after death, but the stories of Okay, I'll, I'll kind, of, kind of start this out, I guess. <clears throat> I didn't plan on this, but I'll, uh, like Mason, try to get some thoughts about Dwayne. Not on? Not on. Okay. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I was a 29-year-old guy when I moved here, and like, like uh, Mason said, our lives really began here at this church. So... I met Dwayne like Mason uh, with that big head of hair and the first time I came to church I was invited to help with the youth and Mason was stuffing teenagers in a Volkswagen out back. <laughs> so I got to know Dwayne and Lori and you can't say one without the other like Mason said and Dwayne became a big part of my life because <clears throat> he was always upbeat, always had good things to say. We were involved in sports. Um, I remember Dwayne, uh, we played softball. Jerry was involved in a lot, of, a lot of our youth here in Mason. And Dwayne used to have a problem with his wrists and he had, he had to have these gold shots in his wrists. And I told him, I said, Dwayne, you should just give up the, the softball thing. He said, no, no. He says, I enjoy it. I want to be there for the rest of the guys. But the better part is, is when years went along, <clears throat> Dwayne, and Lori got married. Uh, we went, used to go out to their place at Shady, and they had a little apartment above, I forget what store that was out there. Say, say again? Yeah, Pennzoil Gas Station. We had some really good times, and we grew together in those years. And then later on, he became the assistant pastor here. And one of the things I really enjoyed then was hearing him speak to have a message at the church. He was a blessing to all of us. So then uh, he, he left and moved away and took part of our hearts with him when he, when he, went, when he left. And uh, his family has been a big part of my life. I remember when Tom, Tom used to do the lessons here at church and he taught a Bible study on Revelations, which I'll never forget. And uh, Dwayne was <clears throat> always in our thoughts and hearts even when he moved away. And uh, when I heard about him being sick, uh, it just broke my heart and Mary's heart because uh, he meant so much to us. And so, Lori, <clears throat> from the bottom of our hearts, we're going to be praying for you every day. And I know that uh, Dwayne's comfortable now with, with the Lord. He's finally home. Well, I'm going to share some things about Dwayne that are not serious at all because we never did anything serious together. I'm going to share two things with you. One's Phil's drive-in. Dwayne and I both worked at Best Way for a little while uh, before I went to college. And uh, so we could finish, we'd go to Phil's drive-in and we'd order like two large pizzas and a um, couple of onion rings and I remember the waitress looking in and going because he had that van and I remember people look the waitress looking in and saying is there anybody else back there 
And the other thing I want people to remember, although I'm quite embarrassed about the whole thing, is if you remember when Dwayne was Starsky and I was Hutch? Some of y'all don't know who Starsky and Hutch are. But. So he had his van and I had my Jeep. And uh, he actually got us holsters <laughs> that, that you wore around you. And we had little toy guns in it. So luckily we didn't get shot by a police officer because they thought we had a gun. And uh, he had a CB radio. He even talked me into getting a CB radio. I bought it at the store next to yours. Uh, uh, I can't remember who owned it. Um, but anyway, I bought this CB radio for 120 bucks, and I had a Jeep with a cloth top. So I was in church one Sunday morning when I came out, my CB radio had been stolen. Uh, you know, Dwayne, I think he moved here when he was a senior. Is that right? So, you know, Dwayne only had a year uh, in high school. Like that's a big deal, high school. But uh, you know, in that length of time, he became as if he'd always been here. And I can remember. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, this could be wrong. I think you all went to a prom with us in my dad's big imperial LeBaron. Yeah. Well, we won't talk about that. <laughs> um, but I can remember Dwayne uh, talking about Lori, and uh, Lori, he loved you. And uh, that's a good thing. And uh, both of us married our, our high school sweethearts. And that's a good thing. And both of us stayed. And that's a really good thing. And so uh, when you think about Dwayne and, uh, the, you know, the sadness and stuff, think about Starsky, okay? <laughs> I didn't intend to speak either, but you inspired me. So we're part of a bigger family, certainly the Christian family, but there's a, there's a best way family represented here too. And, you know, our patriarch, uh, Mason, um, that's really where I met Dwayne. I went to school. We were seniors together, but I really met him at best way, the old best way, um, the one over by Walker's Furniture Store. And uh, just a quick, you know, Mason had an eye for talent, and he pulled Dwayne, not that he hired me, that's one, but he pulled Dwayne into the meat shop, and Dwayne just became a butcher overnight. I was just so impressed by the talent. Well, then the store burned, and uh, we went our separate ways for a little while, and Mason rebuilt where the IGA is now. Dwayne went back to the butcher shop, and I worked cans anyway. We worked together for a long time at Best Way. We're very, very good friends, and Pam and Lori have known each other for that long, 40-some years, I guess. <clears throat> but the point of my story is um, there was a little, used to be a little joint called the Time Out, and I like to hang out down there and uh, dance. And I met this lady sitting right over here that would have been, well, a whole lot of years ago. And I remember, that was on a Friday night, and I remember coming in the next morning, coming into the butcher shop and sharing with Dwayne. I said, Dwayne, I met the woman I'm going to marry last night. And we've been married ever since. And it just so happened that, Lori, if I'm not mistaken, that was one Saturday before you two got married all those years ago. So we share, like I said, we share family on a different dimension than, than some of you are, that, are, that are blood relation. But we sure do love you guys, and we, oh, we just pray for you dearly. Thanks.
let's see what I can tell you about Dwayne. I didn't get to be around Dwayne much as he was growing up because I was a military wife and I was gone a lot from home on d deployment with my husband all over the world. But I can remember when we were young and Francis and George, and Madeline and Odell, they'd all get together. All the Freeman girls and their husbands would get together and they would play cards. Because back at that day, you didn't have television, you didn't have nothing else to do. So the families gathered together more than that in those days and found ways to entertain themselves. Well, while they were playing, the adults were playing the cards, all of us kids would get in the kitchen and we'd make candy. Do you all remember that? Tommy, you remember that? And we was always shooing Dwayne out of the way because he's always coming in and sticking his hands in the candy before it even got hard. He was a mischievous one. Of course, Jerry and Sherry was sort of like this because they were twins. And Dwayne was sort of like the out-of-the-loop out type person. And he kept things going between them all a lot. He did. But we, as a family, we were very fortunate because we come. Our grandparents were very God-related. God we came up under a Christian family, and I think that's where... Dwayne's ministry, him being wanting to do ministry, and where I'm a minister and where Tommy ministers, that come from our grandma, Grandpa Freeman. And we were all raised in church, and that is something that you can pass down a lot of things, but being taught at the feet of our grandfather about the Lord was the most precious thing that he could have gave us. And we were all taught to be respectful to do what we needed to do, to love family. Family is the best thing that the Lord gave. That and babies. That's the best thing that the Lord has ever gave his human creations. But we will miss Dwayne. Because I know most of y'all, as he ministered through the church, knows him and has a lot of thoughts about him. But when you leave that legacy for a while, when you pass away and go to the Lord... And you leave that legacy, what are they going to say about you? What is the legacy they're going to say about you? What have you left behind for your family, for your children, and your grandchildren? Every decision that we make affects somebody. And I enjoyed those days when I was growing up. I had gotten a lot of trouble just like probably most of y'all did. But thank God we had a support system that helped us find the right way. I'm just thankful for Dwayne and the way he loved our Lord and the way that he loved our beautiful friend Lori the way that she deserved to be. Okay, I have notes because I knew I'd forget what I wanted to say. Um, as soon as I'm on the right side. When I think of Dwayne, I think of Dwayne and Lori, or Lori and Dwayne. It was like one word. Um, you didn't think of one without the other. They were a unit together. Um, I met Lori in middle school and Dwayne later on in high school. Um, it was such a fun time. Was, I think Lori was a cheerleader and I was a majorette and Dwayne played football. We really had the Friday night lights, truly. It was great. Um, but Truth be told, our friendships were forged right here in this church because not Friday nights, but every Saturday night we met up in the loft for Bible study, prayer, silly games, um, just deepening our relationships, and I'm forever grateful for that. Um, so my memory is Dwayne R. He had the best laugh, I thought. Um, it was contagious, and when he started laughing, it just... I would just belly laugh and just laugh right along with him. That was great. Um, Dwayne loved his friends. He loved his family. He loved Lori beyond measure. Um, but most of all, he loved Jesus and uh, spent his life serving him. And that's what made him special and loved by everyone. 
And I even put in parentheses, I can't think of anyone who didn't love Dwayne or had a negative thought to say about him. I don't, most of us can't say that about ourselves. Um, so he was just very special, and I'm just honored and blessed to have been his friend. Um, my name is Courtney Johnson, which is a great name to share with Dwayne's daughter. Um, I started going to church here, I think around seventh grade, and um, I didn't grow up in a Christian home, so Dwayne and Lori were it um, as far as shaping my faith and giving me that foundation. Um, I'm just so thankful to both of them. Um, in 1991, Dwayne had taken the youth group to... Um, a whitewater rafting trip and had not told this was in June and he had not told us that um, he was moving yet so on the way back from that trip uh, I just felt the Lord speaking to me that I needed to tell, tell Dwayne that I needed to be baptized and um, um, it was just amazing it still is I tell this story all the time I mean to, to friends that um, because the Lord knew that I would not have been comfortable being baptized by our regular pastor. So, and just the timing of it, you know, Dwayne, Dwayne hadn't told us that, that he was moving, so I didn't know that, but the Lord told me that it was time. So, um, he was able to baptize me before, uh, before they moved away, and then, um, unfortunately, I didn't get to see them again. But um, I'm just so thankful for, again, the, the foundation that, uh, that I have in my Christian faith uh, because of Dwayne and Lori. I just want Lori to know that she has my deepest condolences today, but I want to I want to give that to this whole family because this whole family, on both sides, Lori and Dwayne's, they were a big part of this church for many years, and children don't know how blessed they are to be raised in a godly family, and and Lori and Dwayne both were, Tom and Frida and. Willa and Leo and and just all of you have just so many sweet memories to me Sherry and Jerry and we look back at all the times when when they got married and how happy we were for them but I just want them to know what a joy it's been to know this whole family down through the years uh, from this church and all I can say about Dwayne is he was just one big soft teddy bear he was so humble and just such a joy to know and we will never forget him and his presence and the time that they have spent here and we have truly missed you all over the years but I want you to know that we will never forget and I just pray for each and every one of you that God will strengthen you in days to come and he will and that's all we have. And, uh, and he will get us through no matter how hard the times are. But I just want you all to know that I love all of you all. And um, just trust in the Lord and he will get us through. And I just want to say how happy I am to say that I have got the pleasure to know this whole family. I just want to thank all these kids that are here today that have been a part of my since and my life. Dwayne was such an important part of our lives. We, he was like our, our son too. We kind of adopted him and he never had a negative word to say about anyone. 
He was such a blessing. And Lori's been like a daughter to me. I know that God took Dwayne because he wanted someone special with him. And he couldn't have chosen anybody else that would walk beside the Lord. So I just want to thank you, Lori. I love you, honey. Courtney and Whitney, special. Tom and Frida and Jerry. We just want to thank you for sharing your son and your husband with us over the years because he was such a boy. He's just someone to be so proud of. We loved him. Well, I am a whole lot younger than Dwayne was. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's really interesting. Um, I'm kind of a second generation of the proteins. Uh, the picture that Mason has put on, if you've seen his picture they put on Facebook of that group that is forever united, uh, was a remarkable group uh, in proteins, an incredible group. and. And I was kind of second generation behind them. And I didn't go to church here, um, but Mason's backyard intersected my backyard. And uh, I spent about half my life in, in his home. But, uh, and of course, like everybody else, I worked at Elliott's Family Foods and worked with Dwayne. And, um, and I graduated, and I was 17 years old when I graduated. And I was headed off to Bible College in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And, I'd traveled outside of Daniels, West Virginia, a few times, but not many. And uh, whenever I got to Winston-Salem, for me, for the, for the family, just as a second generation, the, the quick impact that Dwayne and Lori had, um, I got to Winston-Salem, and Dwayne and Lori were home away from home for me. I had not been away from home very much at all, um, but I got there, and, uh, and, and, and I never forget just going to Dwayne and Lori's house. We'd, we'd just show up at their home, and, and Pam's house, Pam Thomas's house, or Elliot, or Pam, whatever her name is now. But, <laughs> but, I, but I just want to say that for me, Mason, when he saw me in the parking lot, he said, I would have never in a million years guessed you would have showed up. <laughs> And it's just because I was kind of just not in, in that same group. I was one group, but I, that quickly, uh, I, I was the benefactor of that great group that you all had together. And uh, Dwayne and Lori were significant uh, impact in my life. So I knew a younger Dwayne. <laughs> uh, I was the, uh, on the Phillips side of the family, I was the oldest grandchild, the firstborn, and uh, enjoyed that position till Dwayne came along. <laughs> I'm told that when, uh, when they asked me what I thought of him, that I said he looked a lot like my old hound dog. <laughs> As I looked at the pictures earlier, uh, saw one of him smoking a cigar. And uh, there was a mention of that on the Facebook page. Uh, I may have something to do with that. <laughs> At our grandparents' house in the basement, my grandfather had pipe tobacco and a cigarette rolling machine. 
And one time, Dwayne and I get together, and we clumsily roll a couple cigarettes, and that may well be the first time that either of us smoked a cigarette. It was very nearly the last time I smoked one. <laughs> but clearly, uh, it stuck with the way. Well, I'm from the second half <clears throat> of Dwayne's life, so I've heard a lot about um, the first half and the things that happened, and when I hear many of your names, I've heard them before, and how they've impacted uh, Dwayne, and uh, how that's carried on uh, to my life as well. I'm not good at things like this. I speak a lot, <clears throat> but I couldn't, even, I couldn't even eulogize my mom two years ago when she passed, and Dwayne did that for me. And uh, Dwayne has um, been a very special part of my life and my development. He married my son in October. Um, <clears throat> and he's way more composed, and he was better at this. But I've heard some things said here today that resonate with me. It's like, wow, that's, that's how I knew him, too. Somebody said he was a big teddy bear, big soft guy. And that's how we always knew him. I met him probably 30 years ago in the business world. And I originally declined him to come to work for me, um, which kept him in Daniels. Uh, but somebody else did. And then I got him about a year later. And he moved for me and his family uh, multiple times. I have no idea what he saw in me. or um, Because I was a very abrasive leader for many years. Um, and he helped me in my development of my own leadership skills. Um, and he didn't even know he was doing it. He forgave me when I wasn't um, a very good leader. But the, the, a, a couple of funny things. So one of the, the thing that of, of this second half of life that we know Dwayne by is this big guy, this big soft teddy bear could take an apple and break it, break it with his fingers, just two hands. He could break uh, an apple apart. So there was. There was a hulk inside um, of that man, uh, but it was amazing how he disguised it um, with generosity and kindness, but it was there. And I think that early in my career, you know, Mason said something too, you know, silence, how, how important silence is. And that's probably the greatest thing I learned from Dwayne. For years, I felt like he, he was such a great performer, but I was so hard on him. And we joked 20 years afterwards how he kept something I wrote about his performance that month, and I used the word pathetic in red. And he, you know, and, and it's part of the development, but he forgave me. Um, and by the way, it wasn't pathetic. The reason he went everywhere is because he was great. He was great at the job. I just was not a great leader at that time. But he helped me. Um, we all went to Louisiana and did um, personality testing back in the mid-90s. And it all seemed kind of hokey and goofy and so forth. Um, but we spent a week doing it, identifying ourselves, and learn. it wasn't about who you are, but it was how do you interact with other people that are not like you. And I had found people like Dwayne who weren't boisterous, who did not want the front of the room, who did not want the stage. Um, I saw that as a weakness. And after going through that, even though he did such a great job, I never understood why he wasn't like me. And um, after going through that, that development, <clears throat> I learned about Dwayne. And, and Dwayne, is, he was content with being behind the scenes. But that didn't mean that he didn't have wisdom or information to share. But his personality is, you have to go ask for it. You're going to have to go and pull it out of him. And it was the beginning of a development of both of our relationships um, in that he, um, I got to the point where I was surrounded with people like myself, and we were going nowhere. We couldn't come up with an idea, we couldn't, and I remember thinking back to my training and think, Dwayne, 
what are some thoughts? And that's when this silence came in. Like, we would sit there for 20 or 30 seconds. So just think about that. You're waiting for, you ask somebody for a response, and you're waiting for 20 or 30 seconds. It seemed like an attorney, and like, are you, do you not have one? Do you, are you waiting to try to figure one out? But anyway, he would come up with this unbelievable creativity. And the ideas were unbelievable. And it was, over the time, it was like, we'd get mad. We're like, what? took you so long to come to this. Why couldn't you, you sat here and let us struggle this whole time and you had the answer all along to help us. But it just was who he was. And I think when I look back on the things that I admire about him, that's who he always was. And where I learned was there are so many people, and by the way, it was liberating for me as a leader to be able to know that I did not have to have all the answers, that I could lean on people around me and it was not a weakness. Uh, but it was a skill that I developed, and he helped me in that. And he never sized me up. He, he never was looked at me um, as a grouch or or whatever. He just I, I I picture him praying for me, and he saw something in me, and he helped me as a leader become a much better man, uh, father, husband. Um, through the years, he helped me come to grips with. Um, I grew up in a in the church. It was very legalistic, and I really got to the point where I didn't feel like I was worthy of making it to heaven, that I could not live the perfect life that I was convinced that I had to lead, and so I drifted away, and I remember in the parking lot in Fort Wayne, him, him and I talking in the parking lot, and he, he, you know, I said, I feel like I only go to God when I have a problem. Like, I use God for when I'm, I'm having pain. It doesn't seem fair, and he said... Do you think there was an intentional? Do you think that might be intentional? <clears throat> and I never had anybody, you know, it was, it was always open-ended question with him, and he was thought-provoking, and he helped me in his whole life, and he became, he became my mentor, even though he worked for me my whole life, or for the last 30 years, he was the best part of what I felt like i become as a person. Um, I was looking at his Bible today, and I see all that wisdom, and I just want to leave with it. I want to leave with his comments. Um, he, uh, so in the second half of his life, he was just like he was in the first half. Um, he was helping people. I tried to get him to step away from the business world uh, many times because I thought he had a pastoral um, gift. And he kept telling me, he said, how many people do you think I touch every day in this world? And I couldn't argue with that. I just felt like he was there. He was always there to take care of me, to, to be my relief. And I kept trying to talk him, not out of, I, I didn't want to lose him, but I just felt his gift was so great to other people. And he convinced me over the years, he liked the business world. He liked being in it. And he did touch many lives. So those of you that um, you know are living here or other parts of the country, and I've met people today from Georgia and South Carolina and Texas, and, you know, and, and probably other states as well, it's amazing what he's carried on um, in Cincinnati and Indianapolis and the number of people that he's touched since that time. So um, I, am, I will miss him. Um, he was, you know, I could send him a question. I just read this. What does this, what do you take from this? And that was always great. He would always say, here's what I take. Here's where that, I think that came from. He never said, this is the answer. He always gave you the opportunity to look it up and to, um, to, uh, come to your own conclusions, and I've always appreciated um, that about him. So the family, uh, Lori and the kids know how much he means to me. I've said it to him many times, but I wanted to share that piece um, on this second half of his life.
Well, I'm probably one of the only people in the world that thought that Dwayne Settle was a horrible boyfriend. <laughs> and uh, I told Lori that. Um, he was possessive. He wouldn't let her cut her bangs. I mean, it was just awful. <laughs> However, he turned out to be a terrific husband. And uh, I remember it was, <laughs> it was 2 o'clock in the morning that I received a phone call uh, from this young man who um, was in jail. <laughs> and uh, he said, I need you to come and get me out of jail. And oh, by the way, could you bring $300? And, uh, and I said, well, to tell you the truth, um, the jailhouse is not the first place I go looking for when I move to town. I don't even know where it is. <laughs> so I lived right across from Duane and Lori in a, part, in a little apartment complex. And so um, I'm not going to downtown at, in Winston-Salem, North Carolina at 2 o'clock in the morning. So I woke Duane up. And Duane drove me, you know, to the bank and downtown. So, you know, a lot of people talk about him being the big teddy bear, but he's a great protector. One of the things that, that was, one of the sweet moments is when I lived across from them and uh, Diane's husband, Mike, was gonna take him flying and he needed somebody to watch Courtney. So he said, Pam, and could, could you come over and, and keep Courtney? Mike wants to take me flying. And Dwayne back then was not a hugger. You know, he, he became a hugger. And even though I had known him for years, Dwayne had never hugged me, never. And so I said, sure, Dwayne, I'll watch Courtney. And he went, thank you, Pam. Thank you so much. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just those uh, silly little moments like that that you just never forget about this great guy, great guy. So, uh, I mean, they all know that I love to wait dearly. Also worked for Mason when I was in college. Is that, is that, no, yeah, yeah. I worked my way through college thanks to Mason in the butcher shop. And I want to say, Pam, when you started that story, I, th I thought it sounded like Dwayne was in jail. <laughs> and I, I never heard that from him. Uh, I moved to Shady in 73. My family was from here. My father was retired military, and we moved back here. I met Duane in August of 75. He slid out of this little car. It, it was like toothpaste coming out of a tube. <laughs> and he had this big afro. And I had heard the new kid in town was from Indiana. So the very first thing I said to him, are you part of the Jackson 5? And, and, he, and he still kidding me that. Kid, he remembered that. But since Pam started the jail story, I want, want everybody to know that Dwayne was no angel. <laughs> this is the stuff that I've been told that his nephews need to know about. Uh, my wife and Lori and Dwayne and 
so many people here uh, all went to high school together and, and 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 at one time or another everybody was important in your lifetime as you grew up but Dwayne and I I, if I asked the question, how many thought of Dwayne as their best friend, I wonder how many people would have raised their hands. And I know it would be me. I know I would be one of them. Even after he moved, we stayed in contact and still would plan things and get together a couple times a year. But some of the things that I remember about our, our life of having fun together, and I, I will tell you this, if Mason was on his shoulder preaching to him and, and filling for the full of the Bible. I was the one on the other side. <laughs> and, uh, and I haven't been in jail either. But uh, when I think of Dwayne, by the way, he, he was in our wedding also. We were married in 1980. He married our oldest son in 2011 and our youngest son he married twice <laughs> because of COVID same, same wife in, in 2019 but when I think of when he lived here and he moved away I think the word that I think about the most with him was, is passion he had a passion for God he had a passion for the family a passion for Lori and the girls. And, and he had a passion in everything he did, whether it be working at Best Way, which I didn't have quite that passion. Uh, whatever he did, and it sounds like he had that passion at work also, and we knew that. Everything he did, he wanted to be the best at. But there was one thing that he couldn't do. That's right, Mason, I'm going to say it. He couldn't have been as good an athlete as me because we argued about it all the time. Uh, there were times, us being on the same team, that we actually got in pushing ma shoving matches together. It's his fault that I was thrown out of two church league games. <laughs> but a couple instances, though, I can tell you. I can remember one time we were playing softball, and, he's, and as, it was our turn to, to, to hit. And he went over to third base to coach, and I was going up to the plate. And as I walked by him, I said, I'm coming to third, baby. He said something like, well, that would be the first time you've ever been here. I doubt that, you know, whatever. <laughs> and I said, I'm coming in, baby. And he said, I'll bet you a dollar. I said, okay. So I, I can't recall whether I, like, grounded out to second or flew out to center or whatever. But when I hit first base, I was going full steam. I turned and ran to second. Never stopped, never slowed down whatsoever. I'm coming in to third. I was already out. 10 minutes ago, and I was flying down there, and he's yelling, get down, get down, get down, and I slid in face first on the third base, and everybody's looking at me like, this guy's nuts, but I got a dollar, which I might say he never paid me. Yeah. Uh, we at one time decided we were going up to Pittsburgh to see a baseball game, see the Pirates play the Phillies. He was passionate about sports. He loved sports. We both did. But we never were as great athletes as we thought we were. That's why we played church league. <laughs> and uh, we were worried. We had it all planned out. And then at the last minute, the ladies decided they were going with us. I guess they thought we needed a chaperone. So uh, we decided, since they were always late, after they went to sleep, we were going to go around the house and change the clocks. So when they woke up three hours earlier than they were supposed to, they get up like, wow, why are we still sleeping? So we, Dwayne and I only knew what was going on until we got into the vehicle and started up the road and everything. We got halfway there, and it's still dark. <laughs> and they're like, what's going on here? What's going on? What? It's an eclipse. It's an eclipse. You know, whatever the case may be. <laughs> but we, would, we wanted to make sure that we saw infield practice, you know, we, we wanted to see the whole game, not just the nine innings. Well, needless to say, that wasn't a good idea when they, when they figured out what we were on to. Uh, another time, we went to the Hall of Fame. We wanted to see the Hall of Fame. And as far as I'm concerned, you can do away with that Butkus jersey. 
But that was his man. That was his man, Dick Buckus. Well, everybody knows that the greatest person in the Hall of Fame is Roger Staubach. <laughs> the first thing we did when we got in there was we, went, we made a beeline to, to Dick Buckus' bu bust. Say that real fast. And, uh, you know, he just took pictures and all that. I took pictures of him next to it. We worked our way down. We finally got to Roger Staubach. And he reached over there and he grabbed the bust and turned it around backwards. I said, that's sacrilegious or something else probably worse than that. I said, what are you doing? And I reached over and grabbed it and turned it back around. About that time, security came in. <laughs> Saw me turning it back around and ex escorted me out the, out the door. <laughs> I waited out in the summertime in a Camaro with no air conditioning for an hour and a half while he just took his time. <laughs> that's the Dwayne Settle I know. Uh, there are times, our, our first road trip, and I can remember the ladies went with us on that, was the snowshoe. He'd never skied before. I had. And we got up there, and he says, I don't know about this, I don't know about this. I said, but the problem is, you don't want to go on this side because there's too many people. You want to cross over the road. There's nobody on the other side of the road. So, we're, so he's, okay, okay, Bob, you know, you know what you're doing. So we went over to Shay's Revenge, Double Diamond. Never been on skis in his life. It took him five days to get down there. I mean, he, it was just so hilarious. It ended up being a miserable trip because I had to wait for him all the time. But I never heard uh, but him just yelling, giving me a hard time all the way back. By the way, with all the run-ins that he and I had, that guy would do anything for me. We never walked away from each other. Anything that we did mad at each other. I couldn't stay mad at and I don't know the grace of God. He's got some, um, he had patience like he was 80 years old. I mean, he had a high tolerance level because I can tell you, I burned through quite a few people here, but never Dwayne, never Dwayne. He was Mr. Steady, Mr. Steady. When he liked you, he liked you. And it was difficult. And again, Pam, I'm sorry he's not a hugger, but he hugged me all the time. I'm just saying. And I tell you, I hate to say this, but there's probably only two men around in this place that I've hugged, and Dwayne was one of them. And the ex-employer was the other. But uh, he, uh, we played basketball, church league basketball. At that time when they had church league basketball, all the old guys, the Herbs, the Juniors, the Larry Freelands, uh, the Roger Woods. I mean, when those guys went out, they were, you know, they had their start in five, I guess they, and you never could get on the court. So we decided we were going to start our own team. There's nothing's worse than losing to the old guys, I can tell you that. But uh, there, was a, there was one example, he, we were playing in a game, and and I guess there was a timeout call, and we went to the bench. He said, Bob, you got to do something. That guy's just killing you. He's killing you. He's killing you. He's, I said, he's, he's roughing me up. He said, you got to retaliate. You know, this is, you know, this is, this is I think it was uh, Maxwell Hill. Oh, we didn't like Maxwell Hill. <laughs> and uh, so I said, okay, okay, I'm going to go in there. So he said, throw those elbows. Let them know you're there. I threw my elbows. Next thing I know, I'm getting up off the floor, and I'm walking over to the bench, and everybody's laughing. They said, Bob, that guy is a Golden Gloves boxing champion. <laughs> and Dwayne knew that. He knew that, plain as day. And uh, there's an another time I can think of. We went up to, I stayed, I stayed up all night in line in the middle of wintertime up in Pittsburgh to get a few tickets for a hockey game. Wayne Gretzky was coming to Pittsburgh against Mary Lemieux. Wayne Gretzky's last season. We had to see that. So I got the tickets, and me and Dwayne and my two sons, Tyler and Scott, went up there to the game the following week. And as they were coming in, we got there early, and as, they, as the players were coming in to go into the stadium, my Tyler, Tyler's yelling for autographs. We got a stick for him to sign and all that. And he was just like about that big. I can remember Dwayne reaching down, grabbing him, and put, putting him on his shoulders, and, and Dwayne starts yelling too. And Tower's waving his, waving his stick and everything. We got about a dozen autographs that day. 
And uh, that was also the first year that they won the Stanley Cup. So that was pretty cool too. But, but Doreen was always, he wasn't just, he, in everything he was passionate. And I very seldom do I think that we had words. And I can tell you, Lloyd and I, we butted heads like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> I mean, both of us are very opinionated and very stubborn and always think we're right. I see nothing wrong with that. But, but anyway, we argue like cats and dogs. And I can remember, Dwayne would just say there, sit there and not say anything. And I never could figure it out. And finally one day he told me, he said, Bob, if you ever broke out in a fight, I know she's going to kill you. <laughs> you know, she could hold her own. But uh, when he moved, I stopped playing everything completely. I started running instead solo because it wasn't the same because it was, it was the friendship that we had and the things that, that was, that was what meant the most to me. It wasn't any fun. Just the bartering back and forth and, you know, pushing each other. That's what made it fun. And uh, again, like I said, it's, it's never been the same. But after he left, I would call him every now and then. And then one day, I believe, Lori uh, uh, told me, he said, he hates to talk on the phone. Bing, light went off. I'm calling him all the time. <laughs> and we talked all the time. And I would keep him on the phone just as long as possible. It was like, you know, it was like teenagers in love, you know, calling their girlfriend or something. But we just, we, I just, we just talked about it. We talked about family. We talked about religion. We talked about politics. We talked about mostly family and family and things that we wanted to do. And we still got together and did things. He loved the Buckeyes. He had good taste. And, uh, we were, and, and you should have saw him when we would go to the Michigan-Ohio State games. I mean, it was like, he was like a little kid. I mean, it was, let's jump, you know, after, let's jump down on the field. And I'm like, are you kidding? Look at all that mob down there. He said, well, we jumped down on the field. It's what he wanted to do. And uh, the, I can even recall uh, our son Scott when he was in Columbus. And uh, I believe that time Dwayne was in Cincinnati at the time. They're going to concerts together, John Miller concerts. I think Courtney, with Courtney, they go to lunch and go to concerts. He never asked me to go to a concert with him. He goes with Dwayne. And, uh, but anyway, I listen to everybody rejoicing because he's in heaven. And I guess I'm selfish. <laughs> but it's just, just tearing me up <laughs> because I'll never meet anybody like him again. <laughs> and he was such a true friend. Such a true friend. So this is your last chance. Uh, I'll give you a couple more seconds. It's a really special time. It's not often in your life that you meet someone like Dwayne. I can remember uh, on a podcast, or, Probably wasn't a podcast at that time. It was probably the radio. <laughs> but, a, but a guy named Jeff Meyer said that in your lifetime, you may have 
five friends, two or three who are going to be really good friends. And Dwayne was that friend to many people. You just knew he cared deeply, passionately for you, and that you could call him anytime. We loved him. Wow. We celebrate with him today. We're so, so thankful that you all took your time to come. And I don't want to be the Holy Spirit, but I know there's a couple people here who really do want to share and have something worth sharing. So I'll bring you the mic. I'm Phil. I'm uh, Lori's much younger brother. <clears throat> and uh, I think the greatest gift that God ever gave to her was Dwayne. I mean, it changed her and impacted her. And he led her and loved her. And she would probably argue that her children are the greatest gift she's had, but. I would say, counter-argument, he gave himself to get them. And there, there are just a few men in my, in my life that I would embrace happily and say, I love you and mean it from the depths of my heart. And Dwayne was one of those guys. And Bobby, let me just... Go ahead and clear this up. He was the superior athlete. <laughs> I, I was on that basketball team, and uh, you would have been kicked out of all of them if he wouldn't have been there, not just a few. And I saw Dwayne as that tender-hearted, big, soft teddy bear, but I saw the lion, the bear. I remember one time we were playing softball, and... Uh, I was stuck on first base because I don't think they could find anyone else to do it. And a ball was coming to me so I could get the guy out. I caught it, but it led me right into the path. And this guy just lowered his shoulder and bowled me over. And I'm rolling in the dirt. And this is a church function. <laughs> and Dwayne was the youth pastor. And he comes over and he grabs that guy. I don't know how I held on to the ball, but I was dazed and I was standing there. And I thought Dwayne was going to kill him. You didn't need to do that. What, what are you thinking? And I'm, and I'm like, Dwayne, you're the pastor. Calm down. <laughs> no, he didn't, you know, it, it was scary. I saw that side at work, at Best Way. He would get angry with a coworker, and he would grab me. <laughs> and he'd pin me against the wall. And the rage, trust me, he was a lion too. Fiercely defending the, anyone who needed it. Loving fiercely. Never at a loss for wisdom for me. Many, many times, many occasions. Taught me how to clip that cigar the right way. And we enjoyed many together. I'm going to miss him terribly. His passion for his family, for his girls, the girls, was just amazing. And I watched that, and I have the same passion for my, my children. He was a model, a role model the whole time. And his biblical knowledge and wisdom that he shared with me. It's just been, I've known him since I was 15 and loved him since I was 15. And when he started dating my sister and fell in love with my sister and yeah, Pam, he controlled her a little bit, but I think she turned out okay. She needed a little control, you know what I mean? <laughs> but as I was pleading with God, begging God to save him, 
I just, I said, God, you will be honored. Raise him up. Let him walk out of that place. And God told me, Phil, I'm going to be honored anyway. Dwayne was a man after my own heart. Don't worry about Dwayne. I've got this. Death is not the same for me as it is for God, for you as it is for God. He, he impressed it upon me that no child born longs for the womb. He goes into life. Dwayne left. He went through the passage into life. We Christians know what I'm talking about. He really believed it. I really believe it. And I believe the love that we have here, we share there in real life. And somehow, Dwayne and I are going to reconnect. I have that hope. You have that hope. And if you don't have that hope, get it as quickly as you can. It's real. Dwayne lived it out. He shared it with me. And folks, God is honored. And, and Dwayne got to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. And God impressed upon me, don't worry about Dwayne. I've got Dwayne. You worry about you. And that's what I need to share. Lori, you know how much I loved him. And I know how much he loved me. And Bobby, he loved you greatly too. But he was the superior athlete. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. I didn't want to be the Holy Spirit and call Phil out. <laughs> or Bobby. I thought they were going to make me. <laughs> but waiting was good. So I'll close with this. Just before Courtney and Whitney come to lead us in a final song. Dwayne's, my memories of Dwayne were 45 years 46 years of just being great friends, uh, of always encouraging each other, of growing together. Like I'd, I'd only gotten saved like a year before Dwayne moved here, before, they, before we started the youth group. And when Howard and Judy asked us to take the youth group, and so I didn't know anything. Um, I didn't know anything about the Bible. I didn't know anything about church. I just didn't know anything. Uh, so we grew together. And in our quiet times and studying together, praying together, reading together, uh, Dwayne would always challenge me. And I learned as much from him as he did from me. We were just constantly bouncing concepts off of each other. After he went to Piedmont, he, uh, in one of his classes, he, he came back and we were standing in the back room at the produce table and uh, just talking about this class that he had and the book that they were reading, which was Knowing God by J.I. Packer. And we started reading it together. He challenged me to read it, <clears throat> and then we'd talk about it. In chapter 12 or 13, on the right-hand side of the page, about halfway down, one day I came across a phrase um, that Packer used, and it was knowing the very worst about us, knowing us better than we know ourselves. God chose to love us and to give himself for us. Dwayne and I talked about that for the next 40 years. It became a constant refrain to understanding how much God loved us. Uh, grace was a new concept. The love of God, compassion, kindness. Um, and it's one that we grew in understanding together. And uh, it changed my life. And I, 
I know the one thing that Dwayne would say if he were here today, and I'm confident, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I know that he would say, no matter where you are in life today, Jesus loves you. No matter what you're going through, Jesus loves you. He's got the answer. He would, lead, he would do it by asking a question. <laughs> he would want you to think through it yourself. Uh, but there is hope. <laughs> Don't forget that. Well, it, thanks so much for being here. Courtney and Whitney, who were the two most second prize possessions in his life, are going to come now and, and lead us in a final song.
I promise you we won't be real long. Um, we just had a few closing thoughts for all of you that we wanted to share. Um, first of all, thank you all for your heartfelt words and for sharing those sweet memories. Um, we will hold them dear. Mason, thank you for hosting. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for proteins. Thank you for praying for us. We love you. Thank you. I'm Sherry Chapman, and this is my brother Jerry. And yes, we are twins. <laughs> but uh, Dwayne was a year and a half older, and um, we really were like triplets. Um, I mean, in high school, we did everything together. And uh, never had a car in high school. My brothers drove me everywhere I needed to go. And I think Tim and Laura may, maybe took me to a couple of games as well. But um, my brothers were the pillars of my life. I love them dearly. Please forgive me, but I have to read this or I won't get through it. On March 28th, my brother Dwayne's faith became sight. Everything he believed about God became real. My brother is in heaven now. Heaven is real. And no matter what happens on earth, heaven is the guarantee that our life extends beyond this one. There were three things very dear to my brother's heart. His faith, his family, and his friends. He loved them all fiercely. Dwayne was always in the season of producing fruit for God's kingdom. He did it very quietly. He sought out those needing rescued, and he showed them Christ by his love and his actions. John 15 says, I am the vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they will produce even more. Duane had no desire to be useless for Christ. If he needed pruning so that he could bear more fruit, he trusted God with the knife. God was so kind to us during my brother's illness. And because I only lived a couple hours away, I was able to spend a lot of time in the hospital with him and with Lori. He wasn't awake during most of those times but I believe he knew we were there. We experience the depths of despair and the heights of hope. We found hope as we sang songs, read scripture, and had devotions with him. And later on, God would allow for distant family members to visit. They came from all over. They came from Texas, Canada, North Carolina, Virginia, and West Virginia. God gave us sweet, sacred moments together, and what a gift it was. God was also very kind to allow Duane and Lori to celebrate their birthday and their anniversaries together in the last month. How he loved you, Lori. And I watched how Lori made Duane known to the nurses and the doctors. She wanted them to know him and see him, not just as another COVID patient, but a beautiful soul that he was. She wanted them to know that if he were awake, he would not want all this fuss over him, and he would want to help them in some kind way. Knowing that, we took them cookies and donuts so they could celebrate with us. I also watched the girls, Courtney and Whitney, how they cared so well for their mom. And in the midst of their own pain, they were the stretcher bears for Lori. Your dad would be so proud and full of tears. And if he could, he would say, well done, and don't stop. Although God called Dwayne home on Whitney's birthday, we will move forward and have a double celebration. 
a celebration of Whitney's birth and a celebration of Dwayne's anniversary in heaven. Dwayne and Lori have the greatest friends. From the time of Dwayne's illness to his passing, the outpouring of love from friends far and wide was a kindness only God could provide and at exactly the time we needed it. You brought food, medicine, foot rubs, gifts, cards, texts, and even flew a private plane to just be in person. When Jesus saw someone in need, he would touch them. He knew touch was important. Sometimes Jesus hugs us through our friends' sacrificial and bold gifts. Thank you, friends, for your amazing kindnesses to our family. And thank you for your prayers. I am profoundly sad. I miss my brother. I ache for my mom and dad and Jerry and Robin. They were so looking forward to Dwayne and Lori retiring on the farm. I have aunts and uncles and cousins here today. We see you and we know you hurt for us and with us. Thank you. The empty chair is a hard thing. My brother would want you to know that you can have his kind of faith. And if you are a believer of Christ, this is not the end. Jesus died for all of us so that this would not be the end. 2 Corinthians 4 says, We do not become discouraged or disappointed through our outer self is wasting away, yet our inner self is being renewed day by day. For our momentary light distresses is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. So we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are unseen. For the things which are visible are temporal, but the things which are invisible are everlasting and imperishable. My brother would want you to know that having God living inside you and all around you changes everything. I will never forget this painful time. Yet I still dare to hope when I remember this in Lamentations 3. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies endure forever. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh every morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. This is not the end. Joy is coming. Amen. Thank you. There is just one word that fills my very heart right now. You might think it's love, but it isn't. It's faithfulness to hear you speak sing, be here. And I know life has not been so kind and friendly to you, but you have stayed faithful to Jesus. You know what strength that gives me? You have given us strength. And I want to say a special thank you to those prayer warriors from the beginning of the year and you have not stopped praying. We were strengthened so much by your faith and prayers. And the Lord, too, was greatly moved. Even to spare Dwayne for many months just to allow us to be together, to bear the burden together, to cry together.
to seek him together. And I will never be the same. I love my brother dearly. And my greatest love of him was that he loved Jesus. And it didn't take long to sit down with him quietly. And the two of us would just start talking about Jesus. No greater joy. So, I've been asking a lot. I don't know about you. With the thousands that were praying. Lord, in your sovereign knowledge and wisdom, you gave us your answer. And... Two things the Lord gave me in his word. One was about Israel. He gave them his word in Mount Horeb. Several years later, he sent Moses again and gave him his word again. In Mount Mount Moab, they needed some reminders. But something Moses told the people, he said, God has yet to give you a heart of understanding, or eyes that see, or ears that hear. But he has given you his word a second time. Proverbs says that it is the glory of God to hide his word conceal it behind his glory and it is the glory of kings to seek out these things God has hidden and for me hopefully maybe this will help you the Lord doesn't always explain himself He wants you to search. He wants you to seek. In his presence and in his glory. We will find out as time passes if we seek. Why the Lord chose what he did. So I encourage you. First I thank you and praise God for you. I just can't tell you how strengthened your faith, your prayers, your friendships, just that you still are being faithful to Jesus like my brother. How helpful is that? So don't just let these difficult days pass. Keep asking. Keep seeking. The Lord is inviting us. There is a song. Farther along, you'll understand it. And this is the simplicity of what the Lord has given me. To keep, keep looking. Come into his presence and he will show you his glory. He'll show you. He'll show us. He'll show us why he made this decision. So be faithful. Be encouraged. And let's pray. And then I'll give you a little direction about um, the meal to follow. So pray together with me. Father, from you comes all blessing. From you came the Lord Jesus. And it is through him, Lord, we have learned what love is. Through his sacrifice and sorrow and through his faithfulness, Lord, we stand. We still stand. We still stand before you. 
And we do cry, holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord. How kind are you? Lord, how wise. Thank you for Dwayne. Thank you, thank you. How much of you have we learned through him? Lord, now strengthen us and give us that hope, that resilience. Do not stumble or be defeated by this sorrow. Lord, you do promise that we will stand before you blameless. I know you'll give us strength. Lord, I know you will unveil to those who seek the beauty and wisdom of what you've done here. And I pray a special blessing upon Lori, Courtney, Whitney, Jamie, and Brian. Lord, just be to them all that they need, all that they need. Now, Lord, give you our praise. Thank you for such an opportunity to testify of you and to remember my brother, our brother Dwayne. Now, bless the remainder of our time together this evening. Thy will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Uh, you are all invited, every single one of you, to uh, the farm. It's on Blue Jay 6 Road, 834. Most of you know. If you don't, find someone who does. And uh, you may just, there'll be people helping to advise you where, where to park. And the tent is set, the tables are set, the chairs are set. I hope you're hungry. There'll be lots of food and fun. So uh, please join us. Um, it is going to be outside. It is out in a pasture field. So hopefully you brought some some other shoes perhaps. But uh, there'll be plenty of, plenty of drinks and food. And we really, it is really one of our ways of saying to you, uh, thank you for being so faithful to pray. Uh, this is... This is for you, for your labors, for your tears and your sorrows, but for your prayers especially. So we want to honor you. So please join us. And uh, probably food will be ready probably around 4, but just come on out. Um, and we'll wait till it's prepared and enjoy and love to have you. Thank you.